Hello, hello, hello. Assalamu alaikum. Jianu, pakhara galeni. How much? Who is me? Wash me. Hi, Gonzaimus. Hi, hugs and hellos to all those beautiful, amazing people who are tuned into PT World and are watching World this morning's amazing Independence Day transmission. Yeah. Hello, Maha. How are you? How do you feel today? Hello, everyone. Happy Independence Day to you as well, Shazad. I feel very good today. Um, you know, because it is a very important day today. We have a lot to discuss. We have a lot to go over, and also it's something that. You know, the youth as well today should be really highlighting and, you know, paying attention as to what is happening in the city, uh, uh, country. Yeah, but the only thing they have been paying attention to removing their silences last night because it was very crazy outside and, you know, uh, everybody was popping their fireworks as well. But mm. then at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, the best part is that on such occasions we do come together and we do value and idealize all of those things which were actually taught to us. But are we practicing them? This is something which we are going to talk to about today. Mm. But then... Mm. You know, to start with it, yes. I think we've got a beautiful national song coming your way. It's yes. my resurrection. Oh, I was going to introduce okay, them. You You're just like then. running, with, on, running right. ahead with everything. <laughs> no, but we do have a wonderful song for you. And they were on the show a few weeks ago and they did give us the, the lowdown back then. So let's go take a look. Let's get you guys in the mood. And when you come back, we will discuss Pakistan Independence Day. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And uh, as you all witnessed that it was such a beautiful, amazing effort by Resurrection. Yeah. So I think it is our duty, sole duty to actually project all of what is being produced by our talented youngsters. But exactly. then at the same time... Um, before you do, yeah, say okay, at the same time. Ahead. And one last thing is that, you know, people are re-releasing songs from the past, but it's also good to keep an eye on the past, kind of evolve it, change it up. And these songs are things that are in everyone's hearts. These are things that people can really connect to emotionally, psychologically, and it gives you a bit of ownership. Yes, well. it does indeed. But then at the same time, at the start of the show, as I said, mm. that all of the things which we have been taught by our elders are we actually following that the yes. ideology for which we actually got pakistan are we still on it mm. are we in the right direction these are the things to be asked from our elders once again so mm. we'll be moving on to them on my right hand side i've got somebody who's a journalist he's dedicated his entire life to the country itself he served the country and he's very proud of it as well he's retired but the smile is still on his face and he's none other than mr tahir parwas hello sir assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam how are you I'm fine. How do you feel today? I feel 
energetic. <laughs> you feel energetic. Yes. I can, I can see, see by the smile energy. on your face. You're very happy. It's very good to see people, experts here. To exactly. Discuss. And uh, alongside Tahir Prabhasa, yeah. we've got somebody who is a Rhodes Scholar, you know, author of 26 volumes of poetry and four plays that have been produced internationally. He's a great businessman. I would always love to learn something about business from him after the show, obviously. <laughs> and he's none other than Mr. Ishadullah Khan. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu Pleasure to see you again. Thank you very much for taking our time. You know, we, we all know that, you know, you... You all are busy people, but thank you very much for being with us on this platform on this occasion. And alongside Mr. Rashadullah Khan, sir, we have got somebody who's a social analyst, and he's been on the show, on and off on the show, mm -hmm. and his name is Mr. Abdul Jalil. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, sir. So thank you very much for coming over you. once again. How do you feel today? What are the feelings, the emotional rush? You know, I feel very strong today as being a Pakistani because this is the day when Pakistan was created to bring you know, to, uh, to translate our dream into reality. And that reality is associated with the glory which we enjoyed in our previous existence or in our past. Mm -hmm. And that is what, you know, elevates me all the time. And that is what I will advise the new generation to work for the glory of Pakistan. Probably they do not understand that how much glory we have enjoyed mm -hmm. in past. And we have given what is the best, what could be the best, for the creation of a human civilization. Very nice. But it Very needs a nice. lot of debate. So, so. Ishaan sir, how will you express your gratitude? Well, I would say that uh, first, we are a great country. Indeed. We are the only nuclear, Islamic nuclear power in the world, you say, uh, of great strategic significance. Mm. It's vast mineral and natural resources. And we are set to go. Yep. Yeah. We are set to go, and this is the day when we should Think of going fast. Yes. And we're going to be discussing how exactly to go fast as the sure. con conversation continues. But sir, how about for you? What does today mean for you? Because you've been part of the organization, part of the PTV, part of the government for a long time. How do you feel on this day? I, I, I'm lucky that I remained associated with uh, Pakistan yes. through these uh, uh, all uh, channels. Mm. And uh, I remember that once Kaidazm said, that to get involved in a freedom movement, it's not a big thing. Mm -hmm. Just to safeguard freedom is a big thing. Exactly. So we are in the process of safeguarding our freedom. Okay. But you know, Ishadullah Saab uh, very correctly mentioned that now we have to pick up on our pace as well. And then, you know, Jaleel Saab said that, you know, we need to maintain that glory. What is that glory? Do we even understand what that glory is? I think only those nations uh, can uh, understand that and those individuals yeah. who have uh, passed through uh, this sort of slavery, mm. only they can realize what is freedom and what is glory. Mm. Glory, if you look, look at the past, when, uh, when uh, Pakistan was created, we were not having resources. There was no uh, uh, industries and other things and uh, rather uh, most of the banks were uh, depleted because uh, the money was with Hindus, mm. and uh, they took away their all uh, holdings and belongings, mm. and banks were uh, almost uh, empty. Right. And we have remade Pakistan, we have rebuilt Pakistan, and now we are at a stage that we can say, Alhamdulillah, you look at the stock exchange, you look at the uh, okay. your foreign uh, exchange reserves, mm. and you will find good news. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what a pleasant surprise. We've been joined by somebody uh, who's been around for a long time, alhamdulillah, now. And uh, it's a pleasure. Th thank God that you know, he's actually joined us on this auspicious occasion. Very lucky. And ladies and gentlemen, we have been joined by Dr. R. M. Ikram Azam. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum salam. Thank you. Bless you. <laughs> How do you feel, sir? I feel fine. You feel you fine? Know, but it... I, I, I feel uh, like... Uh, Battle hardened soldier. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. Great. This is what keeps us all going, sir. You know, we obviously, as youngsters, look up to you guys and we follow your steps as well. Yeah. But then, sir, how do you feel on Independence Day? What is oh. that emotional rush which you get? I feel reborn. Wow. Great. I feel great, really. You know, I feel as if I am one year old today. <laughs> <laughs> so, and to, in this day and age, what does it mean to you to uh, celebrate Independence Day? A little day? loud and clear. Um, what does it mean to you to celebrate Independence Day in 2016? You see, um, nothing like independence, mm -hmm. you know. Ask people, ask nations 
who either are still struggling for their independence, like our Kashmiri brothers, mm. or who have lost their independence. Mm. Independence is real life, you know. Mm -hmm. All human beings, they live and they prosper, but their life is incomplete. It's a half-life without independence. Mm -hmm. So independence is really great, very important. Of but course. sir, at, at the same time, how do you think that this day should be celebrated? You see, um, life is full of tragedy mm -hmm. as well as comedy. Mm -hmm. So we have to take it in the stride, you see. Okay. Uh, there's been a terrible tragedy just the other day mm -hmm. in Quetta. Yet life goes on. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, we give them due respect. We care for them. They are not others. They are, they were our sons and brothers and sisters. And our heart bleeds for them. Mm. But independence has its own importance. So we need to celebrate independence mm. as it comes, soberly, mm. sensibly, and yet joyously. Absolutely. Very nice. Great. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we just have to go for a short break. Don't go anywhere because when you guys are going to come back, obviously we are going to come back as well and you guys are going to come back after your cup of tea. We will have definitely something special to talk about and ask about. But I'll pick up on that glory aspect of the entire independence movement. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. And before the break, we were in discussion with our guests as to what does independence mean to them in 2016. And we've had a few uh, re references to the past as well, to the glory days of Pakistan. And we need to get back to those. And I think a lot of people are working towards this. But I'm going to ask Mr. Ishadullah, um, for you in this day and age, like you said, we have the resources, we have everything. What are we, do we still have that concept of the true glory of Pakistan, or are we kind of slightly, slightly um, deviating, deviating from what we should be doing? You know, I think uh, uh, it's very diff difficult to define true glory right now. Yes, we're a great nation, okay. but we have not achieved what we have to achieve. <laughs> glory only comes when you achieve something, and that's not been achieved. Right, and you know for. The children who are watching your program right now and for the people who are going to schools and colleges who are watching your program right now and for people like us, we have to understand that we have to change Pakistan now mm -hmm. and go in the right direction. Right. You see, we have to utilize our many natural resources mm -hmm. and uh, this fantastic population we have got, uh, get them working mm -hmm. to achieve uh, a real nationhood. But sir, at the same time, I'll move on to Jaleel Sahib over here. At the same time, Jaleel Sahib, now the thing is that the ambassadors of change does not seem like to love change so much. So do you think that all of those people who are voicing about change will bring about change? Sir, initially, you have raised the question of the glory. I think it, we should first define what is glory itself. Yeah. And only then we will be able to identify what factors are required we are and what agents are required to build glory in Pakistan. Right. Mm. 
Qaed Azam in one of his speeches said that we are a nation of many hundred and a million with our own culture and calendar, with our own civilization, history and heritage, art and architecture, right? And by all accounts and by all canon of the international law, we constitute a separate nationhood. So it means that the ideology of Pakistan which he defined and which was philosophically interpreted by Qaid, uh, Iqba, Dr. Muhammad Iqbal, who of course carries a lot of fascination for, doc, uh, for Qaid Azam. Uh, it was, in fact, Qaid, what Qaid, Qaid wanted to do when he said that we want, by all count, by all canon of international law, we want to build a, we, we constitute a separate nationhood. It means that the ideology of the Pakistan, the, on which the Pakistan would base down, would in fact ultimately construct and it would become a living model of Islamic civilization. Right. And Islamic civilization is a very, it is a, basically we need to understand what is Islamic civilization. Mm -hmm. Islamic civilization, in fact, it is in the, if you read Iqbal's letter, if you read reconstruction of religious thought in Islam, you will find it that it is made of two elements. Number one, superior ethic, and number two, talent. And talent can only be developed through creativity, and Iqbal, time and again, in his poetry, has contributed, has written a lot about, <coughs> he has written a lot, and he has recommended that the creativity alone bring salvation, as well as life to the nation. Okay, wonderful. Uh, right. may, may, may I add? Sure, Absolutely, sure. please. I, I agree with you entirely, and I w would like to add that Islam, the original Islam of Allah, of the Holy Quran, and of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, not the Islam of any sect or of terrorism or extremism or fanaticism, no. Original Islam, that is the Muslims and Pakistan's identity as well as destiny. Right. And I think the trouble that we are having these days, there's a very easy solution. If the government and the opposition decide to get together and uh, peacefully and decide that we are going to implement the Qaeds and Allama Iqbal's and Mothrama Ms. Fatma Jinnah's the founder's vision of Pakistan, mm -hmm. of enlightened Pakistan. You see, mm -hmm. Pakistan can still become a role model of Muslim state and society and Absolutely. system. Okay. Because if Pakistan is really, you know, other uh, Muslim ten, uh, societies or states, they tend to go towards one extreme or the other. And they have their own interpretations of Islam. Exactly. But is uh, Pakistan, the mm -hmm. Pakistani society, I think we are peaceful. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of people, we are peaceful and we are enlightened and we are moderate. That's like, true. I mean, we are, we are peaceful, otherwise we'd be in constant civil war, I guess, you know, and they'd be, you know, fighting on the streets all the time. But let me ask you, sir, you said to get the people working, to utilize it, because comparatively, you know, there are different people living within Pakistan. Kind of, you know, there should, can be more tolerance, but there is some form of acceptance, but it's not at the level it should be. How do we get people to that stage of that, I, you know, that perfect ideology of Pakistan, the type of people that should be living here, the type of mentality we should have? Because half of the time what happens is that there are too many mindsets roaming around. So now if that's what, you know, I truly agree to you, sir, but then at the same time, when you have too many mindsets, it's just the same as you have got too many chefs in the kitchen at the same time. So they're not going to cook anything so what do you well. Think about, what do you think about this comment? You know, uh, in Pakistan, for example, today, yeah. we have uh, chaps with the BA degrees, mm. master's degrees, MBA degrees, uh, working as waiters in restaurants and hotels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, we have got vast areas of land in Pakistan. And we should follow the Japanese model, right. which was done there at one time. What we should do is we should give each of these guys 15 acres of land mm -hmm. and let him cultivate what he wants to cultivate there, build his own place there, mm -hmm. and he will become self-sufficient, but he'll also contribute to the national economy. And that's how we can motivate our vast population 
which has no jobs, which is well below the poverty level, level to rise and contribute to the national economy. Okay. I think this is what we must do. Wonderful. Okay. It's a wonderful idea. And again, you see all uh, metropolises and megalopolises and huge big they're high crime societies mm -hmm. and cities mm -hmm. all over the world. So we need to create new towns, new cities, and there should be limits to, the, to their growth, right. and, and to their physical growth, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of so many acres or whatever, mm -hmm. and in terms of population. I think no town or city should have a population of more than one million, mm -hmm. 10 lakhs, you see. Otherwise, it becomes man, uh, unmanageable, you see. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I think we need to take development where it belongs, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the villages are becoming depopulated. Yes. People are moving to uh, to the cities, and that is causing, you know, kachiyabadis, jugis, shanty towns, city sprawl, and unplanned ur urbanization. So we need to go back to where development is. But sir, I think at the same needed. time, it will be quite difficult for uh, for us, all of us, to go back and take the development where it belongs, because you know, mm -hmm. I think Islamabad is one of those cities which was very well planned. But we're moving off the topic as well over here. No, I'm not talking of you and me as yeah, individuals. Yeah, yeah. At the level of planning, exactly. you know, policy planning. So these are different planning, ideas. Futuristic planning. Okay, absolutely. You see, I'm a futurist by training. So we are trained to uh, look ahead. Okay. You know, not only just the traditional five years or one p uh, year plan of the government, but can I add something? Years, sure, absolutely. Sure. I was going to ask you. You've been. No, no. I just 40. want to add. Uh, yeah. We can achieve these targets only if uh, we remember the words of Qayyad Azam when he first uh, uh, addressed uh, to the Constituent Assembly after his uh, election as president of uh, that Constituent uh, Assembly on uh, August 11, 1947. Mm -hmm. He categorically said that we are facing corruption, nepotism and other things. Mm -hmm. We should now today on the Independence Day, we must realize mm. what we have done to eradicate these uh, uh, menaces. menaces. Mm. 